Dr. Fred Travis is a distinguished neuroscientist and pioneering researcher in the study of meditation, consciousness, and the brain. Dr. Travis has authored more than 70 papers and conference presentations that investigate the relation between brain patterns, conscious processes, states of consciousness, and transcendental meditation. He currently serves as the director of the Center for Brain Consciousness and Cognition at Maharshi University of Management. It has been the work of many top scientists, cardiologists, neurologists, brain researchers like Dr. Travis, that has helped create this phase transition. But Dr. Fred Travis has been at the forefront for over 40 years. Please welcome Dr. Travis and also the person who's going to have her brain waves shown live, his daughter, Dariana, who just came from New Hampshire. So please welcome Dr. Travis and Dariana. Good evening. Thank you for the kind introduction, Bob. Tonight I'll be talking about meditation, transcending, and the brain. First, about meditation. Meditations can be seen to fall into three categories. Focus attention, open monitoring, automatic self-transcending. Focus attention, it's concentrating, mind control, mental control. And when you concentrate, you see a very fast wave. It's called gamma EEG. Gamma is reported in meditations such as Zen, uh, Qigong, compassion meditation, Vipassana meditation. Second category, open monitoring. This is any meditation that involves dispassionate observation of breath, emotions, thoughts, bodily sensations. Attention to internal experiences are associated with another brain wave. It's called theta. It goes up and down five to seven times per second. And theta is reported during mindfulness meditation, Kriya Yoga. The third category is automatic self-transcending. This includes any meditation that transcends its steps of practice. These meditations start with thinking and end up with pure self-awareness or pure consciousness without thoughts, feelings, or sensory perception. Alpha-1 EEG is reported when awareness is turned within, is silent, alert. Alpha-1 is reported during transcendental meditation. Also, a 45-year case study of a Qigong master. The Qigong master developed automaticity through extensive practice. In contrast, automatic Transcending is built into the Transcendental Meditation Program so that people report pure consciousness experiences after a few days of practice. This is getting into the second point of my talk, transcending, pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is fundamentally different than customary waking experiences. Waking experiences can be summarized as subject observing object. You right now are the subject, observing me as the object. You can reflect on what I'm saying. You can reflect on what you're seeing. <clears throat> Pure consciousness is a different kind of experience. It transcends the customary structure of waking experience. We could say pure consciousness is subject observing subject. Intellectually, this is true. However, more accurately, pure consciousness is pure self-awareness. Our individual mind identifies with its inner nature and becomes that state. So let's look at the brain model of pure consciousness. This is my third point. Here's the brain. Person's looking to the right. The center of the brain is called the thalamus. It's a red oval you see there. A researcher stained the thalamus and found two different types of nuclei. One type received sensory in information, sight, hearing, touch, taste. Feedback loops between these nuclei and the cortex develops a neural picture of objects in the world. That's where Dariana, my daughter, and I are in your brain. The other type of nuclei receive internal stimulation up the brainstem. These also create feedback loops and they determine levels of wakefulness. This is our customary experience. You're awake, there's content, you're having waking experience. Transcending systematically decreases the content. 
Thoughts are transcending, revealing the state of consciousness or pure wakefulness that is already there. Wakefulness circuits. You could say the content of this experience is emptiness because there's nothing there. No phenomenological content is there. Or you could say that the content of this state is wakefulness itself. It's self-awareness, full and free from relative experience. This brain model supports the brain waves seen during pure consciousness experiences. If it takes 100 milliseconds for one loop to go up and back. So in a second, it goes up and down 10 times. And what this does is leads to a 10 cycle per second wave, the alpha one wave that we've talked about. Here we have brain waves seen during transcendental meditation practice. X-axis is time. Each column is a second. The y-axis contains 32 points on the scalp where we recorded EEG. Uh, count the wave at the bottom. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's those wakefulness circuits. Notice they're throughout the brain because when the mind settles down, so the brain settles down to its, its ground state. It's a state where we're not doing or thinking, but just being. In addition, notice the waves are going up and down together. Look at the two waves on the bottom line. You see the rising and falling are very similar. This is something called coherence. And another way to picture this is this way. Uh, the top row are the uh, top of the head, the bottom row is the front of the head. The dots that you see are places that we record brain waves. There's a line between dots if those parts of the brain are coherent, 80% or more. What coherence means is that those parts of the brain are working together in whatever the task is. Now notice the coherence is in this alpha-1 frequency. It's very high in the front of the brain. as the part of the brain that's central for executive processing, for impulse control, for sense of self. And we see this high frontal coherence spreads throughout the brain. This side presents blood flow patterns during transcendental meditation. The red color indicates higher blood flow. And notice it's in the front of the brain, the executive system. The blue color indicates decreased blood flow. This is the brain stem, cerebellum. This is a part of the brain that revs you up. This is a part of the brain that got you out of the house into the cold. Now, lower blood flow in these brain areas leads to the experience of silence, of calm. And at the same time, higher blood flow in the front leads to alertness. It's a unique state of restful alertness. And the benefits of contacting pure consciousness is the brain begins to integrate the restful alertness of pure consciousness into daily life. You're transforming the inner nature of the mind. It's like dyeing a cloth. You put a cloth in dye, it comes out saturated in color. You put it in the sun, a little bit stays. You put it back into the dye, back into the sun. And what happened, gradually, the color becomes fast. Similarly, by transcending and coming into activity, you bring the restful alertness of pure consciousness to support each day greater success. I'll just review three lines of research, and then my colleague and friend, Dr. Stixru, to go more deeply into the applied benefits. This random assignment research was done uh, with 10 to 14-year-olds. We use a brain measure of attention deficit hyperactive disorder, a theta EEG over beta EEG. At baseline, both groups had high levels of ADHD symptoms, that's on the left. One group were trained in transcendental meditation, that's the solid blue line, and you notice the severity of H attention deficit hyperactive disorder started to go down. The middle, three months, now the control group learned, and so both groups are practicing TM, we notice that both groups, this marker of ADHD has dropped. The experience of pure consciousness gives a new basis of living life for people with post-traumatic stress disorder. Our research reports that TM practice leads to substantial reductions in P PDS symptoms in Vietnam vets and Iraqi vets. The research shown here reports the effects of transcending on refugees, African refugees. And what we see is that in 30 days practice of transcendental meditation, their PDS symptoms went to non-symptomatic and remained low. 
The last random assignment study I'd like to look at was, is college students. These aren't, it's not a clinical group, but they're dealing with a great deal of stress. This is looking at brain integration, um, and frontal alpha coherence is a key measure, part of that measure. At baseline, both groups were similar. That's the two bars on the left. Then the subjects in the TM group, the blue column, were trained in transcendental meditation. The control group um, just did their usual college activities. Now, the post-test was three months later, and those are the two bars on the right. Post-test was just before finals week. Huge stress for the student. Staying up late, fatigue, Re reduces vigilance, it reduces ability to learn, stress. And what we're seeing here is what is a functioning of the brain in a very stressful situation. And we see those people who've been transcending for the three months, uh, they actually have higher levels of brain integration. They didn't perceive finals week as stress, they perceived it as challenge. The inner nature of the mind has changed and so they were able to perceive the situation and deal with it in a much more effective way. By changing your inner nature, you can begin to see problems um, as challenges rather than as stresses. The students trained in transcendental meditation also had greater reductions in negative personality traits, that's the first three set of bars, and greater improvements in positive personality traits, the, the last four sets, including um, better emotional behavioral coping. So now let's look at EEG in real time. So what we're seeing is Dariana's EEG from the two frontal leads. Uh, these are the two leads you see and the first two rows. Um, and it's from the left and right side. We're looking at the, the brain, front of the brain, because that's where the major changes occur during TM practice. Now, this is what your brain looks like when 150 very intelligent people are looking at you. <laughs> and what you notice is the, um, the bottom line, which is looking at coherence, is highly variable. It goes from, at the very bottom of that row is zero coherence, up to the top, which is perfect coherence. And po coherence, again, is how different parts of the brain are working together. In this case, it's the frontal areas of the brain. Okay, so let's, we'll have Dariana close her eyes, and before she does that, I'm going to have, have you tell me when she starts TM. Not now, but when we go through it again. So you can close your eyes and start your TM practice. Thank you, Dariana, so you can sit easily. Stop meditating, open your eyes. So you ready for your task? Here we go. So notice very highly variable coherence. That's a healthy brain, by the way, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Has she started meditating yet? Yeah. This, this is the alpha coherence um, on the right, the alpha waves that we talked about, and we see the coherence is very high. If you're following a lot of the clicks, you would notice that the coherence go down for a bit. It's very natural, because TM, transcendental meditation, doesn't mean you go into a trance but rather the attention is going within, you're transcending, and if something is outside, it goes out again. And as it goes out, attention goes down. As you put your attention in, attention goes back. Good, so back to my PowerPoint, so my final slide. Thank you, Dariana, it was magnificent. So transcending leads to a distinct experience, pure consciousness that transforms the inner nature of the mind and so provides a new platform for living life. Thank you very much.